project that I started. So there has been some uh, great app demos before this, and uh, compared to them, this is so simple it's almost emb embarrassing. So uh, I'll give you a brief overview of, of what it is. Uh, have you ever faced a situation, either one of these, uh, or maybe both of them, in which you have got an SMS or a call which you were not expecting, and you were in the middle of doing something really important, maybe in your sleep, and uh, they're trying to sell something to you, right? We all have faced this problem. Now, uh, this is... Uh, the problem started with, with the, the mobile revolution in India, when the rates of uh, call and SMS came down, drastically down, so that it was uh, economically viable to uh, send spam on mobile. Now, the problem with this is that uh, spam on email you can safely ignore because it does not uh, bother you as much. But mobile uh, demands your immediate attention. So this, I think, uh, spam on mobile is the most, uh, most bothering of all problems. Now, the, there was uh, finally, Tri woke up uh, to this problem, and after two, three years, they came up with a solution in which all the telemarketers had to register with TRI. All the users had to register to DND, which is Do Not Disturb Directory for India. And even after uh, registering, if a user gets uh, a spam message, then uh, he, can, uh, he can report that message by sending. Uh, he had to collect three information. Uh, one, the content of the SMS, the time and date of the SMS, and uh, uh, the number of the SMS, right? And he has to uh, collect all this information into a very complex uh, string and then send the string to 1909. And uh, on repeated um, um, uh, reportings of uh, this telemarketer, the number was disconnected. Now, there's a problem with this solution in the sense that the whole onus is set, uh, is set upon user, right? He has to uh, collect all the information, then uh, uh, condense it into a string which, is, uh, which has a very specific uh, format, and then send it as well, right? Now, on the top of it, what uh, telecom operators are doing is they have uh, different implementation of the same string. The string has been uh, uh, defined by try, but uh, what telecom operators are doing is they are having their own implementation of strings. So for IDEA, there would be a semicolon between fields. For ATEL, there would be a, a colon, I don't know. So there, there are different uh, implementations. Now, due to this, the effect is that user simply gives up. He does not care enough to actually report a spam SMS or call. Right? So I came up with a solution, uh, which is pretty simple. I created an Android app. And features of this app are, first of all, it's free and there are no ads. I don't intend to make money out of it. This is just a hobby project. Uh, there's single tap reporting of spam. So you see a nice list of SMS and calls that you have received in past three days because try specifies that you can only report the calls and SMS that you have received in the last three days. So it filters out everything else. You just need to uh, tap on one particular entry, and it is reported to try as a spam. Uh, there's also one nice feature, like the last uh, problem that I told in in previous slide, is that it automatically identifies your operator and circle, and uh, intelligently applies the kind of string that that operator accepts. Right? So you don't have to do anything. And uh, registering for DND is also an option, so you uh, get a, a list of uh, categories for which you can register or deregister from DN and DND, and uh, you don't have to again write SMS for this. And you can also check the uh, status of complaint that you have made previously. And there's also a feature requested by users that in some case they send an SMS and the repo, uh, network operator just replies back that you have um, sent an invalid SMS. I mean, the format was not correct. So for that, you just need to tell uh, the app that this is the error message that I've received from operator. That email would be sent to me. And I will look, look into it and correct that format for that particular operator and release an update for the app. Now uh, I'll uh, show you free screenshots of the um, app. This is the screen that you can use uh, to, sorry, to register for DND. So these are the categories that you can select and then register or unregister. 
right? This is the screen you actually get when you start the app for the first time. As you can see at the bottom that uh, there's a message which says that uh, it has automatically identified the operator and the circle and applied, applied the correct uh, format uh, skill, uh, sorry, uh, string. Now these are the calls that I've received uh, recently. So you see them as a list and you also see the time and the date so that you have a hint that when was this uh, call received. When you tap on any of these, you are presented with this screen so that you can confirm that all the details are correct. Here you can specify the, uh, um, the content of the SMS or the name of the company which has sent you the SMS. Uh, if, you're not, uh, if you think that you can add more to the uh, SMS, then, uh, sorry, the, the string, then you can also edit it and then send it. Now this screen is used here. You can uh, specify the code that uh, your network operator sends after you register for uh, uh, a spam message and you can check the status whether this telemarketer has been disconnected or not. And this is the screen where you, uh, this is a, like a feel good screen that you can see that how many uh, spam messages or telemarketers you have reported and got disconnected. So these are some of the reviews which I've got on uh, Play Store. Uh, I, I could not print all 400 of, of them, but and, uh, these are some of the positive reviews that I've got. Uh, the effect uh, has uh, so far has been that there are uh, close to 6,000 installs. And uh, through these installs, I've been able to maintain a rating of 4.8 out of 5. And uh, uh, there's also, uh, my users are reporting that they are, uh, uh, there are at least hundreds of reports filed every day, given that, that, that uh, there are about 6,000 people who are using this app. And uh, there has also been a, a report of a frequent disconnection of uh, the telemarket here. Now, here's an appeal for this app because uh, uh, this app is useful only when more people start using it because the, the, it takes six reports for a tele telemarketer to be disconnected, right? So if more people are using it, it makes more sense. Uh, for, uh, it, it, there are more chances for the telemarketer to get disconnected. And in the end, it, if a lot of people are actually using it, we reach that critical mass, then it, uh, it becomes uh, uh, unviable for the telemarketer to get new numbers every time. So I request you to all, all of you to download this app and start using it. and perhaps promote it in your circles as well. A bit of a background, uh, I'm a single person developing this and uh, I had no idea about Java or Android when I started, so I learned on the way, so I did mistakes and copy-pasted code from wherever I can, could find. So finally at the end of it, I think the app has reached to a uh, level where, where it is stable enough for use and uh, there are no uh, bugs reported in the last six months or so. So it's pretty stable now, you can start using it. I think it's not stopped working. Okay, then that's all. Thank you. Any questions?
Hello. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we hear from Uber. Uber is a technology company over an app for the Android and the iPhone. Uh, as opposed to me explaining to you, we're going to show you a short video and then we can uh, chat about what we do and how we do it. All right, so that's who, that's who we are. Uh, we're basically um, a technology app. Like I said, we're a technology company. You download uh, the app on your iPhone or Android. You push a button and a car shows up. We're in about 60 markets across the world in 22 countries. Uh, we recently got our, uh, our funding from uh, Google Ventures, which is the largest funding ever by Google for about $258 million. So we're ag uh, aggressively expanding across markets in India as well. So. Um, that is kind of the background of uh, where we are. So let me talk about the app itself. Um, so, so the first, the key focus really is on uh, the on-demand nature of the app, which is that we don't, we don't really have advanced reservations because the entire business is built around the idea that there is suff there's abundance of downtime that you have in transportation ecosystems across the world, the, which is that the cars that are generally booked out are, uh, uh, I mean, I mean the, the, the cars that you can book for eight hours or four hours, they have a lot of downtime, which means that they have free time that's where the car is lying in the garage and there's nobody hiring it, which is when we give them the option to come on a system that allows them to connect to riders like you who want to go back from here, for instance, or anywhere else in the city and you have a transportation pain point and we say, you know what, let's connect the two and that's kind of the technology, pla that's the platform uh, which is the Uber app. Um, we, there are certain uh, unique features of the app, of course. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a fairly reliable uh, pickup, which is that we've seen across the experience uh, in our different cities that eventually you will have enough cars that have a lot of downtime where they don't have business and they will come out on the streets uh, to, to take rides. And, um, and that's when the service becomes reliable, even without advanced reservation. So we kind of we, uh, uh, build around our focus around that building that environment, making that possible. We have a very clear pricing policy. Uh, you can, uh, you can uh, look up the prices on the app itself. You download the app, you push a button, there's a, there's a whole banner that shows you the prices. Uh, so it's fairly uh, self-sufficient in that sense. 
Uh, this is one of the most significant, uh, uh, one of my personal favorite uh, features of the app, really, because uh, the entire Uber experience is cashless, which means that everything from the beginning of your booking your ride to, the, uh, to billing your ride in the end is done through the app. So what really happens is you push a button, the car shows up, they don't call you, you already get your GPS location, you're going to see that in the app demo, and uh, you hop into the car, you finish your ride, you tell the driver where you want to go, you, finish, you get off at the destination, and you walk out. There is no cash exchanged between the driver and the rider. Uh, you're billed to your credit card, which is uh, filed uh, with your Uber account, and eventually you're sent a ride receipt, which is... Uh, fairly detailed, which, uh, which also gives you the route taken by the driver, and if, if you feel like you want a fair review uh, or that the route was inefficient, you can write, to, uh, write back to us and we'll adjust the fare accordingly. So everything is, from the entire user experience is through uh, the app itself, and the, and, uh, which kind of makes it uh, fairly unique in that sense. Uh, so we also have a mandatory feedback policy within the app. So at the end of your ride, uh, both the driver and the rider get to rate each other. So eventually, uh, I mean, and this is a, f uh, well, I say mandatory because the driver can't take another ride without rating the rider, and the rider can't take another ride without rating the driver that he took on his previous ride. Which means that eventually, over time, we collect enough data and ratings, uh, which allows us to kind of maintain the high quality of uh, riders and drivers uh, within a city to facilitate this kind of um, uh, an ecosystem. And of course, uh, so uh, that is the uh, this is the product that we uh, launch every city with. It's the Uber Black, which is a high-end sedan on demand. So uh, this were in in a market like Bangalore, you would probably find our, our partners uh, having cars like anything above the Corolla Altis, the Toyota Camry, the Mercedes-Benz E-Class, the BMW 5 Series, and beyond. Um, So, uh, before I take questions, I'd like you to think of the Uber app as more as a platform to provide an on-demand, uh, to, to satiate an on-demand audience, because the, while a lot of people tend to confuse us with the transportation company, which we're really not, because we really build the technology to make this possible. We don't own the cars or employ the drivers. Uh, we, only make, we only make it easier for drivers to connect with riders and vice versa. So. We have done a bunch of experiments, so you can really use the app to more, the possibilities of the app and the platform are kind of limitless, because you can use the app to deliver an on an on demand experience to consumers tomorrow today it 's cars but the but like i said like uh, we have we don 't know where this can go tomorrow uh, we 've done a bunch of really fun experiments across the world that 's uh, my favorite one is on the top left corner, which is washington d c where you know like you one on president 's day one in twenty people uh, who requested a ride would get a limousine that looked like that with an American flag flanked by two SUVs with drivers dressed as CIA officers and with like fake earpieces and everything opening doors for you. And when it, uh, it's called the Ubercade and uh, kids would knock on the door when, it's, uh, when uh, the, the Ubercade would stop at a signal. So that was fun. Um, we've also done a bunch of... Uh, uh, I, I, uh, and on the top down corner you will see, on the right you will see Uber Chopper, which is in New York. Uh, you push a button, a black town car comes and picks you up from your house, takes you to the helipad, you get into a chopper, you fly to the Hamptons, you come back and the car takes you back home, and we package that entire experience by the push of a button. Uh, that's really all you had to do. You had to sit at home and push a button, and this entire thing would uh, be delivered uh, to you. Right? So that's kind, of the, uh, that's kind of the potential of an app like this. Uh, this is some of the other stuff that we've done. Like uh, for National Cat Day three weeks ago, we raised money for charity. That's, we, uh, and that's, that's kind of the other interesting thing you can do with a platform like this, uh, where we delivered kittens on demand. So, like, uh, you basically, like, you can push a button and at, uh, at your workplace or your home, and a truck would roll up and give you, like, kittens to play with for about 15 minutes, and all the money we collected went to charity, and if you like, you can adopt the kitten as well. Um, then that's some of the other stuff, which is Axwell on demand. For those music fans, um, we had in Stockholm, Axwell had a concert. Uh, between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m., you could push a button, Axwell would drive you to his own concert uh, if you're lucky. So that's kind of the, uh, a brief of what the platform is capable of. We're currently operational in, we've scaled the transportation um, product that we launch across 60 cities. 
Uh, but then again, like I said, we, uh, this is, this is, uh, it's capable of much more. So I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of what the app uh, looks like in real time. Okay, so that's what the app looks like. You download the app and you register, and that's what it's going to look like. So it's literally a button. You can see cars all around you. I'm going to now, I'm going to now push that button. It says set pickup location. The closest car is seven minutes away. Um, so, so there you will see that the uh, that the car details are already displayed. The last four digits, of course. And I'm going to say request pickup here. So. You, it's requesting the closest driver available, and the drivers have uh, a driver version of this phone as well. So it's beeping before him right now, and he gets about he gets a certain amount of time to accept or reject the request. And there you go, he's accepted it. I, can you see this clearly? Yes. Okay, that's great. So uh, once the driver accepts it, you get an ETA, you get a bunch of other details, you get his photograph, you get. So you get the car, you get his name, of course, you get his rating, you get the car he's driving. So in this case, it's Pugazendi. He's driving a BMW 5 Series. Uh, right under that, you will see uh, the number plate. And uh, if I click here, I can do a bunch of things. I can contact the driver. Obviously, I can SMS or call him if I have to. Usually, you don't have to because your GPS location is already with him. So he will drive up to you and send you a message when he's there, and you walk out and get in the car. In the, in the event that you, have, you find yourself having to explain to him directions, you can do that through the contact driver. Uh, then you can split your fare, which is a cool feature, which basically is that if you're traveling with a friend and um, you can basically send him an invite, he says accept, and it gets split into two separate credit cards through the app. And uh, for all those times you've traveled with a friend who hasn't paid for it, he said he promised to pay. This is a useful feature. Um, this is share my ETA, which is uh, one, 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 which our engineers are like the coolest guys. Share my ETA is a feature which basically is you select a, a, a number in your contact list and you share your ETA with the person. So, for instance, if if some if uh, if my mother was traveling late at night and she was coming back home uh, and she wants to keep my father informed of when she's coming, she can choose his contact number and it will send him a link and he opens that link on his uh, phone or computer and he can see her drive up in a, a map opens up and he can see her drive up in real time uh, to the destination and of course the driver details will also get passed on sorry so um, I'm gonna begin the trip right now uh, I mean so the driver can has the uh, has the option of beginning the trip so he's so when you get into the car he begins the trip He's now begun the trip, and now can we get him to end it? Yeah, OK. So once he ends the trip, you, guess you get the receipt at the end of the ride, which looks like this. So minimum fare is 200 rupees. Um, and you can rate, like I said, you can rate. I can't take another ride without rating the driver. So I'm going to rate him out of five. I can add comments here if I choose to. And I say submit, and I come back to the same screen. So the point is, the entire experience end to end is only through the app, and uh, that's kind of the uh, uh, experience that you can bring to real life problems using just like like an like a uh, like an interface that uh, people more often than not use every day, and kind of make every part of that experience included within the technology. So if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to take them. I'm not sure. I think I've gone. I have about a minute left okay that's fantastic thank you so much ladies and gentlemen yeah oh, sure hey uh, regarding the ETA you're yeah. just showing the location of the person or are you gonna predict some time that he's gonna have in from 15 minutes to 20 minutes uh, so uh, to clarify the ETA basically is the distance or is the time that the driver will take from his location to your pickup location. By default, your pickup location is set to where you are because it's likely that you'll be requesting a ride from where you currently are. But you can also book 
theoretically you can book a ride for anybody anywhere in the world where we are so you can move that pin to another location and you can request a ride and you will be able to still the car will drive up there if it's for somebody else that you're requesting so the eta is the, is the so to summarize the eta is the is the time that that's that it'll take for the car to reach from where it currently is to the uh, to your uh, pickup location and usually it's the closest not usually it's always the closest car closest available car that gets the dispatch when you send a request so that's kind of how the uh, how we manage to push down ETS as low as possible yeah go ahead You have a question, right? Do we have a question? Yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm a big fan of actually Uber. So I'm from Delhi and I used your service twice over there. So I have two questions. Uh, one is, uh, do you guys have a curation process for the drivers or can, like, if I'm a driver, can I sign up as a Uber driver today? Or, uh, like, is it, uh, do you, have a certain bar, a minimum bar or a, a checklist that you go through before like signing up a driver with Uber? Yeah, okay, so that's uh, kind of, the, that question is kind of operational, so we, I'm happy to discuss with, discuss this outside. But just to answer that briefly, yes, we do have a quality standard uh, uh, that all drivers, are, uh, our drivers and our partners are required to meet before we get anybody on board. So they have to be licensed, professional, and uh, meet a certain Uber standard of courtesy and uh, professionalism. So that, we can, we can obviously talk about that uh, in more detail. Uh, I, I have another question, yeah. which is more technological. So uh, the drivers themselves, they have iPhones, right? For That's uh, So uh, w in my experience, what happened was that uh, I also had an iPhone and I requested the service, but uh, you're using Google Maps on uh, the client side. Like uh, as a passenger, I have Google Maps, but the driver had Apple Maps over there and he was unable to find me. So uh, is there any particular reason why you chose to use two different mapping services for the driver and the client side? Uh, so, like our engineers are always uh, reinventing, I'm not, uh, uh, the, it's, A, there, there's two things that happens, right? When, uh, when, you're, when you're kind of, uh, as one of, the, one of the common problems that we face is that signal issues may sometimes land the GPS pin in the wrong location. So, so your, your, uh, uh, and in that case, it might be a little inconvenient on on certain occasion to find you uh, as, uh, which is why you have your you can contact the uh, rider through through your through through the app in case you ever have to clarify the details. But usually, what we prefer is manually pushing the pin to exactly where you want the pickup location to be in the event that the those occasional mishaps happen where uh, due to bad signal your GPS pin is your GPS location is picked up incorrectly. Right. So uh, the. Uh, these are briefly the like the business angle of building any app that we've kind of put together, uh, which is interesting. I think uh, so. If uh, so, the idea is to really build an experience that uh, is tangible because apps are intangible, and we strive to make that experience as uh, uh, as kind of convenient and efficient and elegant as possible when it transforms into the real world, which is really. Uh, and, and at the same time, keep all of the uh, different components of that experience within the framework of the app. So I think that's an interesting uh, uh, that's an interesting lesson from uh, the from doing the kind of business that we do. Um, if there are any questions, you can find uh, either me or Bhavik, who's our general manager for the city outside, and we're happy to talk about. Uh, how we run the city or anything else that you want to talk about in uh, uh, technology. Hi, uh, I have a question I here. I might be running out of time, so this is the last question. Can I take the last question? I can't? Okay, so we can just talk about this later. Sure, sure. All right, thank you so much, Rajinya. Hi, uh, just a quick announcement. So at 5.30, we have lightning talks upstairs. So the idea behind lightning talks is that anyone can come and talk about something for five minutes. Uh, we're looking for, let's say you've done something innovative on Android. You want to show that off. You have five minutes. Um, let's say you have a product idea, right? And you want to get more people to work with you on that. 
So you can use lightning talks for that. So basically you have five minutes to talk about something that will hopefully interest people. Right? Um, there's a sign-up sheet, so you'll have to come here and write your name and your topic, and then at 5.30 we'll assemble upstairs and, and start the lightning talks. Right? Hello. Hi. Uh, I represent a company called Dexetra. We're a startup based out of Bangalore. Um, now, interesting st stuff is what we do. We are building a really interesting smartphone. So, uh, the app we are trying to show showcase here is called Dialab. Could you guys see it? No, they can't. It's not coming. Okay, sorry about that. Right, so uh, we're showcasing an app called Dialab over here. Dialab now basically runs on an engine called Friday. Friday, what is Friday? Before I come to that, we need to know what a phone is. So we had a really crazy evolution in terms of phones, which is the basic gadget right now for everyone. So we had the real static telephone before. We, got, we had cell phones, the primitive ones. Then we have something called smartphones. Now, um, I'm kind of intrigued by the name because we say it's a smartphone, it doesn't do anything smart, really. So what next? What's the next evolutionary step? So, dynamic user experience is what we think is the next step. Now, phones should start behaving intelligently to help the users, reducing the manual effort that's involved. Then it's called a smartphone. So, for that, we had to build an engine called Friday. Now, what Friday would do is that it would collect information of you, from calls, texts, emails, locations, pictures, music, whatever you do with your phone, and then makes a contextual layer on the cloud. Now this is made searchable, so basically everything in your life is searchable. But the interesting thing is, we always have a lot of patterns in our life that we don't recognize. These patterns are something that we execute every single day, day in and day out. Now, for example, now I call him, I try to call him, I don't, I don't get him. The next thing I would do is call my other colleague. These are, these are steps that I would do, but I wouldn't recognize this. So how do we make these steps useful? So, uh, so we invented Dialab. Now what Dialab does is, and Dialab is a basic function of a phone, right? Phone is for making calls. Now, uh, it's been, ever since the phones come up, the Dialab hasn't evolved. So you find the same static list there. Uh, the reverse chronological order of, of the callies, right? So if I call a pizza guy right now, he's gonna figure in my call log. It doesn't make sense, because I'm not going to call him again and again. Right, so, uh, so we thought, okay, let's make this intuitive. Let's make the dial-up decide for itself whom you, whom you might call right now. Reduce the number of taps, right? So, so we said, okay, at this point of time, uh, these are the people whom I might get in touch with. These are the people who might call. So let's say, for example, I send a text to someone. Hey, dude, I'll call you at 4 o'clock. Now, what if that guy would pop up on top of my dial-up dial -up list? the list of, uh, of probable colleagues. And then easier for me to find a colleague and call him. 
rather than you know searching a contact book and then making the call. Reducing the number of taps is the point here. We want to, you know, we want to make the phone really smart. So we launched uh, Dial-Up on the market a couple of months ago. Now we got about 500,000 users in there, and we got 41 million calls. The interesting stuff is there, there is an option to see a regular call log or the suggested call log. Now people, of the 41 million calls that were made, 35 million happened through the suggestions. These are, these are cool stats. I, I hope you get the depth of this. Right. Now, uh, besides, you know, besides doing a really cool stuff by, you know, taking out the existing call log and replacing it with an intuitive one, we also invented something called a tiny contacts. This is a patent pending thing. Uh, the patent is right here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what it does is we have a lot of contacts on our address book that are totally useless. Now, if I'm looking for a house uh, for rent in Bangalore, uh, I might find a lot of numbers on, on the internet and I try calling them up. Uh, probably, you know, I find the, uh, what the going rate for, for the flat is, and then I would save the number like that. So, for example, I'd have someone like Arun 2 BHK, 15,000 rupees, and it's there on my contact list. Now, I don't go, I don't put in the effort to do that, uh, to go into the address book and delete this, because these are not useful contacts. These are contacts that are used for a limited period of time. So, we said, okay, let's have something called tiny contacts. Now, these are contacts that have an automatic expiry time. So, let's say if I, if I'm, if I got a flat, and these, this issue of finding a flat would be over in a month. So you could save this uh, contact as a tiny contact, and then after a month, you'd be prompted, do you want to keep this number or do you want to delete it? So everything is made much more clutterless. So, uh, right. uh, so we we put in a lot of thought on how to make this dialer and how to make this really simple and how to make this uh, user-friendly. So what we did was, you know, we gave users no learning curve. So uh, the stock dialer design was replicated. We added a bit more elements to it and eventually got ourselves featured on the Google Play Store, of course. Right, so um, I let my colleague run you through a demo of the, of the app. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hi, my name is Kiran. So I'll give you a quick preview of the dial app. Yeah. So basically, this is the uh, first screen that you're going to see. It's a basic the dial, app, dial, dial pad screen. So this has the basic functions like Cube Dial, T9 and everything. Then this is the most important screen. This will come back later. This is the third one. This is a contact. But you might be familiar with the theme. This is a Nexus, uh, sorry, Stock Dialer theme. So we have just adopted it for mass adoption in the beginning. So we don't want people to go skeptical like they are going to use this app daily. So we just use the normal theme. So this is the call log screen. In the call log means, okay, this is where we show our suggestions. So these are where these magic uh, numbers that pop up based on your patterns of calling, where you are, and whom you are supposed to call at this hour, th those all will be coming here on first. So most probably you won't be needing the call log at all. But even though if you need, there's a button like here, you can see the call log here. But that, it's our vision that you won't be needing the call log. You'll be only needing our list of contacts, whom you're supposed to call. So it's been working for me and most all the users, I guess. So then I'll show you about the tiny contacts. So this is a tiny contact. So whenever I have an unknown number, like recently I had a craze like buying and cycle. So I just went to OLX and Qcur and got some lot of numbers. So I like for second hand uh, bicycles. So what I did I, was I saved it as like B twin 6K cycle, B twin camel, B twin like temporary. So I just contact them like for one or two weeks. So what I did was save them as a contact for two weeks. So after two weeks, it might it will automatically delete it. So I given the option like that. So this then I also use this as a PNR number store, storing. Like whenever I'm going to travel, I just save my PNR number in this. Uh, then for quick access, then there's a widget also for instincts and showing the missed calls. Also, uh, yeah, I have replaced my default dialer as my dial app. Thank you. Right, so, uh, okay. Any questions? Anything? Please. No one? Ask me my name at least, please. Okay. All right, all right. Bye bye then.
Hi. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is having a good show. I am uh, Nitin Gupta, founder and CEO at Airgold.com. So, with Airgold, you can go live on air using a single, simple phone in your pocket. Airgold is basically a real-time video broadcasting network and platform for mobile to mobile and mobile to web interaction. Uh, I'll probably start with how uh, the app looks like, and then uh, you know uh, talk about uh, what all uh, stuff I've been doing with Airgold. So uh, unfortunately, the Wi-Fi is not working, and I'm on a very crappy uh, 2G connection. But yeah, let's hope it uh, works out. So I can connect using Facebook or email or as an anonymous user. I'll just try connecting using Facebook, and that's the screen which I is it the, is this the right one? Oh, okay, great. Sorry about that. So it's basically uh, the landscape mode. I can give a caption to my video. I can apply any interesting effects right when I'm broadcasting. So I can convert my video to negative. I can convert my video to give it a retro effect. I can convert my video to give it a classic uh, black and white effect and I'll just push the start button, and it starts broadcasting live right now. So uh, on, on a little 2G connection, and here it goes. This has notified all my followers on Airgold. This has notified all my fans on Facebook, and this has sent an email to all my followers, and this is also going live on airgold.com. That's our public website. So oops. Seven viewing right now. People can interact with me. So right now, I'll probably hopefully see one of my friends come over here. But anyway, uh, as people are broadcasting, uh, watching this live right now, you keep seeing on the top left over there, there are eight viewing right now. Anybody can comment on my video, like it, and I would see live right here as I'm broadcasting it. So I'm just hoping, you know, someone else shows up. And uh, I'll just, you know, try to give a view of what exactly I'm trying to do. <laughs> and this goes on unlimited, and it gives you the timer at the top right as well. And as soon as I stop, it asks me to choose a category. And right now, as I'm broadcasting, it is recording for you as well. So there is no uploading. It is recording for you on the cloud for any time, anywhere access across your devices or web inside your account. So you can log in into airgold.com using your Facebook login or email login and can access all your videos anytime, anywhere later. So I'll just put a stop uh, on my video right now. I can choose a category. I'll just say events. And this is a 2G connection, so it, it, it works you know, pretty decently on a Wi-Fi or a 3G or a 4G connection. I can give tags to my video for uh, searching on the platform. And I can access them uh, within the app. So next time uh, uh, you know, when, you, when you log in into the app, you can obviously you know, uh, go to your account and access all your videos. At the same time, uh, just to repeat my point again, it's a mobile to mobile and mobile to video network, mobile to web network. So let's say I am on Airgoal and you are all my followers on Facebook or Airgoal. Next time when I do a broadcast, you all get notified on your mobile phone. On the notification, you can just simply click on it and you start watching me live on your mobile phone. At the same time, you, if you are on Facebook, it basically has sent a link for the live video on my Facebook wall. So all my 400, 500 friends on my Facebook contact list will just click on the link, go to a web page, which is airgold.com, and they would start seeing it live. And they can also obviously interact with me uh, within the app or uh, uh, on, the, on the website. I can just put some quick tags. Go next. My live broadcast has gone, 
it has recorded it for me as well in parallel. It has saved it for me on the cloud for any time, any, any, uh, anywhere access. And I can share my video later with, uh, you know, on email, on Facebook, on Twitter, on SMS, or on WhatsApp. So I'll just skip it right here. What does this thing do? These are all my notifications. And I get them outside my app as a normal Facebook notification. So just like you know, somebody follows you on Facebook or comments on your post, you, you get a really nice uh, notification uh, on your phone. Similarly, anywhere around the world, somebody watches your video, somebody comments on it, somebody starts following you on Airgoal, you'll get a nice uh, you know, uh, small notification to, to, to notify you of that. And if a notification is associated with your video, you can click on it and uh, you start watching that video right now. You can, uh, so I just did a little swipe. You can browse your own videos. You can browse the videos for your friends on Airgoal and Facebook. You can watch all the trending videos. And the, the trending has got a little formula where, you know, uh, the videos which are generating a lot of views and a lot of interaction come under trending videos automatically. You can watch all the latest videos and you can watch all the videos for people you are following on the network. You can comment on them, you can, uh, let me just quickly do the latest. And we'll see a uh, couple of videos which are being broadcasted right now across the world. So while this thing loads, I'll quickly So there you go. These are all the latest videos which are being broadcasted right now. And the last one was around five minutes ago, which was me. And then the last one was about 49 minutes ago. But in terms of uh, uh, a user base, we are uh, looking to cross 100,000 downloads uh, uh, across iOS and Android. This is an Android app, but we are also available on uh, iPhone, of course. And uh, uh, we were uh, one of the top 150 startups uh, at Web Summit, which is like the SXSW of uh, Europe. Uh, where we demoed on stage in Dublin and uh, have won uh, multiple national and uh, uh, international accolades in the last uh, six to eight months. I'll quickly switch to my presentation very quickly. Uh, the app kind of uh, spoke for it uh, pretty much, but basically just to recap, free iPhone and Android app, it's available for free on Android and iPhone, real-time broadcasting up to five minutes. We limit you up to five minutes. It's gamified. So if you do more, you get upgraded to be able to uh, broadcast multiple minutes. So you start with one minute and you go up to five minutes. And then for businesses, you can obviously do unlimited streaming. You can apply amazing effects right at the time of broadcasting. You can share them live on Facebook or all, your, all, all of the social networks and obviously on airgold.com. And it's fully private. You can choose your videos to keep private as well. By the way, this was a public video which I wanted to showcase to everyone, but you know, for your own personal use case, if you just want to keep your videos private, you just have to select the privacy option in the app. For advertisers, we have our custom ad server technology, which is able to give you inline video ads as well as pre-roll and post-roll video ads. So when your video broadcast ends, you might see location specific tiny ads at the end of the video and also uh, towards the video end. We are working with a couple of brands uh, to enable their advertisements, but basically uh, the ad engagement is just like, you know, what you, what you uh, see on YouTube. That's air ads. For businesses, we have an enterprise solution where all you do is three lines of HTML code and these free apps and you just seamlessly put those three lines of HTML code on your website, and we can enable live video broadcasting for a business using a phone. What are the couple of use cases? Air media for news and events. A television company can use Airgoal and give the app to their journalist on the road, and they can start broadcasting you know, all, the, all the crazy stuff that might happen on the road. Air retail applied to real estate where you can use the app and the technology to actually do a live experience of home viewing. Air Retail, where you can use it for an e-commerce website and enable live product demonstrations and increase engagement and conversions on your website. And Air Leisure, which we applied for a hotel industry or a, or a, or a, or a room industry where you can broadcast uh, uh, you know, live uh, 
room experience before somebody can book it for you. What is the differentiator or the USB live video broadcasting on an iOS and an Android device? Doing it on Android, supporting versions 2.3 plus onwards across almost 800 different mobile phone models across 20 plus manufacturers is a very hard problem. Meaningful serious video content. You know, you, you do live video broadcasting, it's a serious video. It's not a five second or a 16 second clip. So, you know, we, we basically enable really capturing the moment and broadcasting it live. Combine above with all our unique business models. Thank you. I would love to take any questions. No, no, I, I said I'd love to take any questions. Any questions? Uh, I have one. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. I stream a video like where it is stored. The, where is the video stored actually? It's all on the cloud. cloud? We, use, we heavily use Amazon uh, uh, Web Services and Amazon EC2, RDS. SES, lot of Amazon Web Services which are at the play. Our streaming server technology also uh, is uh, hosted on the cloud. So your videos and your broadcasts are basically on the cloud and that's the reason you are able to, you know, we are able to give access uh, for you across devices. But when I press that button and when I was broadcasting live, it was all going through our streaming server infrastructure on Amazon EC2. And then obviously there is interesting technology which is, which is lying on the phone, uh, you know, where we are encoding, decoding audio, video uh, and stuff within the Android device and then, you know, efficiently, efficiently uh, transporting it. Yeah. Yeah, you're told there'll be a broadcasting live. Can you pa pause the bro broadcast and resume it later? Sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, uh, it, can you stop it for a while, like pause button and this thing? Can you pause the broadcast and uh, resume it? Oh, okay. Later? Sorry, I, I get the question. No, no. Once you pause it, it's 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 done. Yeah. The reason being that uh, that defeats the purpose of live broadcasting, right? Once you stop it, it's no longer live. You you might again restart it at at, at maybe after a difference of thirty seconds, but that's another broadcast, effectively. Hi. Uh, how do you differentiate from Quake, Bamboozer, or Ustream TV? Right. So. Number one, on Android device, a real mobile to mobile and mobile to web network, that's one differentiation. Number two, the business model that we are applying it to. So we are working with businesses, uh, you know, and enabling, giving them basically no infrastructure required, no hardware cost, all it takes is two minutes and you would be live effectively on your platform. So our unique business model combined with the, with the technology effectively. I think that's it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Hello everyone, my name is Sarthak and this is my friend Manish. Uh, so basically, giving a background of our application, uh, this was developed in the Pune Hack Night this year. So this was the winner for the Pune Hack Night and we were fortunate enough to come here for free because we won that competition. So coming to the application, it is named as Abs and Crypto. Uh, it is basically a library which would help other applications. It is a library project and it basically helps other applications to encrypt or decrypt content on a background thread or a service. So moving on to the next slide. Uh, <clears throat> so from where did we get this idea to develop an application like this? Uh, 
So in our personal experience, we saw that there were many enterprise level applications, etc., whose major goal was not file security, but because these applications stored file on an Android device, so they had to incorporate encryption uh, because we see that Android devices can be rooted and that gives users access to the data data directory. Also, it give, uh, also SD card is available on an Android device for any application to access. So that gave us an idea to develop this application. Uh, now what does this application basically do? Uh, it gives freedom to the client application to run the encryption on a encryption or decryption on a async task or a background thread or a background service or it also has the flexibility to allow the application to create, create its own thread and this will only run the uh, crypto operation on that thread which the client application has created. So here are some of the features. So the crypto operations can be run on an async thread or a service then uh, the progress callbacks are relayed back to the client application. Uh, in case of a service, uh, a notification is also sh shown in the notification drawer of Android, uh, showing the progress of the current uh, operation. And, of, and also this is open source, so anyone can contribute. So we'll quickly give a demo of the application, and I'll hand over the demo to Manish. Hi, guys. Uh Yeah, as you can see, our uh, we had only a few time for development of uh, an application as a library. So the focus was uh, totally on the library instead of uh, the application, example application. Uh, now you can see here there is a uh, file manager which is showing the folders as well as files. Now let's. Uh, select uh, root means SD card then inside SD card we have a, a, a particular file uh, a, a PDF file let's consider droidcon PDF now whenever we click a particular file we, we can uh, encrypt that particular file in three different ways first is uh, by using uh, a thread second by using a sync task or thirdly by using uh, service. Now all we know that uh, there are means uh, by using a thread we can uh, means the user need to create its own thread and he can particularly handle that particular uh, um, encryption. Not encryption by, uh, but the showing uh, the UI portion what, whatever he wants to show. And the progress bar need, uh, can be handled by the user. Now uh, let's select the um, service first. Now whenever we select a service, we can uh, see the notification in the upper drawer. So the notification will uh, show the pro uh, progress of uh, the encryption. Now this particular file has been encrypted and uh, now let's see another example for uh, uh, image file, the manish.png. Now this time we will select, uh, 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 let's say, a sync task. So uh, if we go in a background, uh, uh, in a log file, we can see the particular um, progress so that we can edit or change uh, according to our requirement. Now, uh, to check whether they are really encrypted or not, we can just extract them from the device and see that they are encrypted. Now, uh, by, while he is doing the uh, extraction process, let me tell you that whenever we are uh, encrypting a particular file, we are uh, prefixing that particular file name uh, with an ENC for uh, encryption. And if uh, if the encrypted file is again clicked, it will uh, ask for the decryption process and the same three options will be given to it. So,
Now, if we see in uh, desktop, we have uh, encrypted Manish and encrypted uh, PDF file. Yeah. Sure. So, if, uh, even we try to open it, it won't be open. And same, if we uh, decrypt that particular file and extract it outside and check, it will be opening. So, this all, let me hand over the application mic to uh, Satak. So actually I won't demo the decryption process right now because we are short on time, but it ex happens exactly in the same way. So you can see the progress notification and the file will be get decrypted and you can open the file finally when you pull it from your emulator in the, on, the, on your PC. After that, uh, okay. So many people asked me this question that what was unique about this library? Uh, that you don't find in other encryption libraries. So, what is unique is that we've tried to make it highly configurable. And we've also tried to make it, uh, in, we've also tried to write it in such a way that you have to write minimum amount of code to achieve maximum output from this library. So, I, I won't cover the application architecture right now, but here is how client applications can use this library. Uh, you just have to create an instance of crypto manager and there is a configuration object where you set different stuff like uh, the input file path, the output file path, then you would select the mode of the crypto operation and you'll select a cipher object. Now this cipher object is a cipher object from javax.crypto package and so you can specify any encryption or decryption algorithm uh, which is supported by javax.crypto. And then finally you give this, you call this process method and you pass in the configuration object and the rest of the thing the library will do for you. Now I'll skip the architecture overview and coming to the future scope. So what we plan to develop in the near future is to support byte buffer encryption as well as stream encryption which is not supported right now. Only file encryption is supported. Uh, after that we also plan to support notifications for async tasks. They are supported for services only right now. And then we also plan to provide helper functions or classes for certain uh, encryption standards that are widely used. Um, so that was all from our side. And I think the questions, for the question session, you'll have to catch us outside. Thank you. Hello everyone, good evening. I'm Sangash from Ola Caps and I'm here to share our experience of building an enterprise Android application for fleet management and many other purposes. So when Ola Caps started, we had a problem of how to track the fleet and how to manage the booking life cycle. And of course the traditional ways of doing it over SMS or over phone was not going to work for us and we needed a scalable and yet affordable solution for this. So, and as, as per our business model, we also don't own the cab. So we were looking for a solution which is not very much tightly coupled with the cab, 
maybe some uh, wires going into the engine or uh, some uh, chip in the car. So we found the answer in Android. So uh, I'll go into the solution, but right. Sorry. Yep. And so we are, we are looking for this kind of solution. And uh, right now, the solution has been working amazingly for us. So our Android app and the infrastructure surrounding it uh, today supports thousands of cabs. Uh, the app runs for 10K hours per day and helps us serve thousands of customers every day. So this is the primary app uh, screen, first screen, which we call idle screen as well. So here, the driver is ready for, to take a booking. And from our system, we push the booking to him using uh, GCM, Google Cloud Messaging. And then it looks something like this to the driver. Driver can uh, acknowledge the booking from here. And uh, then uh, there are few screenshots missing over here. But uh, we give him a navigation to the customer's pickup point uh, using Google Maps. And once he reaches there, the uh, customer can board the cab. And uh, finally, he can see the billing and the breakup in the app as well. As, and it is sent to him as via SMS as well. So I'm here to talk about my, my experience of building an enterprise Android application. So it's not a typical app demo which you have been seeing right now. So there's not going to be app demo. Rather than I'll be talking about experiences and few of the interesting things which we did here. Yeah, so building an enterprise app is much different from building a consumer app. Here, for instance, we want to control a couple of things more tightly and do not allow user to do a few things. Uh, for example, we wanted our app to be a single mo app mode or run in a chaos mode so the driver is not able to do other things. Um, apart from that, we had the benefit of using as many permissions as possible because they were running on kind of our own devices and there's no restriction on that, which is not in the case of consumer apps. Yeah, apart from, uh, and as the app is very critical to our business, we wanted to have a robust communication and uh, app to be self-sufficient. We wanted various uh, auto recovery strategies for lack of uh, data connection or loss of GPS. So we have uh, incorporated and uh, iterated over various strategies and have come to a stage where it is doing very fine for us. So let's deep, deep dive into a few of the things which we did. So one of the challenges we had to solve is when your enterprise application is running on thousands of cabs, and uh, let, you have to iterate over your business logic, maybe sometimes on some of the strategies. So we wanted a facility to upgrade the app over the air. Um, there are a few services, uh, and we started with using Pushlink, which is a service to upgrade your app. But right now, we have uh, uh, written our own module for this. So that's quite simple. Um, so the logic goes like this. So uh, you can push a notification about a new available update uh, using uh, GCM, like for example. And uh, in our case, we download the APK into the device memory. As we do not have SD cards, we download it in the device memory. And once the download is complete, we just launch the um, uh, start intent for this. So I have a code snippet for it. I'll just show you. And this is the download part. And this slide is on SlideShare, so you can refer to it later as well. And this is the launch is install part, intent firing. And couple of integrity checks as well. Apart, so few things which we did for recovery from GPS. Uh, thanks to developers of GPS status, uh, if you have heard about this app, it lets you uh, clear your cache GPS uh, information which may, may have become stale and uh, sometime prohibits getting you a GPS fix. So uh, we are using the similar code snippet and uh, we trigger it from our server. So in certain cases when your device is not able to get a GPS fix, uh, this uh, uh, usually helps us. Uh, here's the code snippet for it for later reference. Communication. So uh, our country scenario is much different from various developed countries and there are some areas where you might not get a very good connectivity and sometimes your G, uh, GCM push may fail or sometimes your um, 
HTTP call from server from app to server might fail. So we have you we are using the SMS failover uh, over these uh, normal mode of communication, so that reliability is uh, higher than usual. Uh, we are also so once we opted for Android application just for fleet tracking and uh, ride uh, ride lifecycle management, we later found out that it can be used in various other ways as well, such as for navigation assistant for the driver. So we have uh, few strategies which is which are mentioned over here for assisting driver for the navigation. Also, we facilitate uh, cashless uh, payments using EasyTap uh, SDK. Um, so you can pay either by card or by cash. Both the options are there. Uh, yeah, a few of the third-party libraries which helped us build this app, uh, LoopJ, which is a HTTP client, and GCM for the push notifications, criticism, criticism for crash reporting, JSON, and New Relic. So yeah, this is how it looks on the server side. Uh, well, this is a wild chaos here of many cabs around in all over the Bangalore, and uh, uh, various colors depict various stage, states the cab is in. So let's say the black cab is the one which is idle, and the green is the one which is with the customer. So there are various uh, options and various filters available to our operations team as well. Here I'm just showing a snapshot. Yep. So all this, this app plus a lot of backend infrastructure, which I have not covered here, allows us to give you a experience of one touch booking. So yeah, I'll just, how much time do I have? Okay, cool. So I have a couple of videos to show you and I have enough time as well. So here's the one touch booking, cab booking experience. Sorry, there's no sound. You can see available cabs near you and how far the nearest cab is. Tap on right now and your cab is on its way. You may also plan your ride for later. Saturday night party or Wednesday noon shopping. The screen is not getting shared. Uh, sorry. Sorry, some problem with the projector or my Mac. But the presentation was there. Just give me a moment. Cab's mobile app for Android and iPhone is the smartest way to book a cab. You can either choose your current location or point the pin to a custom location on the map or simply search it up. You can see available cabs near you and how far the nearest cab is. Tap on right now and your cab is on its way. You may also plan your ride for later. Saturday night party or Wednesday noon shopping. Get an Sorry. See your cab coming towards you in real time on the app. Say hola to your driver and phone. Okay, I'll switch over to the next uh, video. Uh, we can skip this one.
Yeah, so we can let this video uh, run in the background, and if, uh, if there are any questions, I can take them. Any questions? By the way, this is the video uh, describing our in-cab uh, app. So since there is not good sound, I let it turn in the background. Uh, how do you ensure that the calculation which your uh, GP, uh, mobile app calculates is matching your car's kilometer runs? Uh, that's a tricky part. Um, I cannot talk about the distance calculation which we do because it's our trade secret. Any other question? Thank you.